Hey guys, Greg Beast with another Beast Lab. Uh, today, I'm gonna be going over something that uh, is kind of long overdue. Um, as an FOA coach, the reason that all of our athletes improve, no matter whether they're picking up a stick for the first time or they're a two-time All-American, is that we focus on what's important. We focus on technique and getting rid of wasted movement. So the reason this FOA system came about for me was my background is as a strength coach. I worked at Penn State and then I moved to New York and I started a strength training company that a lot of you guys know. Um, however, my degree and my background is in biomechanics and kinesiology. So what I did when we created this FOA system was I applied my knowledge of biomechanics to the face-off. And that's why the system works so well because nothing we do is based on, well, this works for me, it might work for you. Everything we teach is to get rid of wasted movement. That's what we obsess over. So I'm gonna go over today a few drills that are old school that still get taught today. Um, by a lot of coaches out there who may not know the face off that well and maybe this is a, a way of kind of giving you guys a little bit more of a narrow direction to help you not waste time uh, with certain drills that won't help you and definitely at least one drill that is detrimental to your bio, to your biomechanics as it uh, pertains to the face off. So there's three out there that I see and I just want to kind of give you guys my knowledge from a scientific background so it can help you kind of cut that stuff out so you can focus on what's really going to help you so that we can help optimize your ability at the face-off. So the first one, and this is gonna be kind of a shock to a lot of people, is the right-handed face-off, okay? So I know this is old school, and I understand the thought process behind this. Anything that I do two-handed, if I practice it one-handed, it's gonna be better. That might pertain to having wall ball, okay? If I'm trying to strengthen my forearms, catching the ball as it's moving back and forth, you know, on multiple different planes. I'm trying to strengthen my wrist and try my forearm so I gain more control over the stick, going backhand this way. I understand that because this is exactly the motion that you would use when you're throwing and catching. Okay, the right hand snapping over, the left hand's pulling down. This makes perfect biomechanical sense and it will strengthen your forearms, okay? Now, as it pertains to the face-off, we have a biomechanical disadvantage on this. The ball is always in the same spot. Our goal is to get from our stance to the ball as quickly as we can, obviously, right? Now, the ball's lined up here. My goal is to get from here to here as quickly as I can. In order to do that, the first thing that has to move is my right and left hand. And I know that you're like, duh, I get that. But here's the problem. I want you to take, as a coach, I want you to take five of your face-off guys. I want you to take your iPhone, and I want you to say, hey, today, I just want to see you guys do right-handed clamps on the whistle. Blow five whistles. Obviously, I don't know why, but we put our hand behind our back just so there's no cheating, I guess. And watch them do this, okay? Nothing seems wrong here, right? I'm going right-handed. This is going to help my clamp. Then I want you to slow the video down after you video them, and I want you to watch something. The first thing that moves on the video every single time is this. The elbow. It's called an elbow flare. You biomechanically aren't gonna get to the ball without moving your elbow, okay? It's just not, it's not possible. Your left hand's not there to drive, okay? So what's gonna happen is players are gonna develop this elbow flare on the whistle. And once you start to develop an elbow flare, it is so hard to get rid of, okay? Once you ingrain that into your motions and it's, it's biomechanically learned, it's really hard to get rid of it. You can ask some of my athletes, we're trying everything we can to make sure we can get back to this because this is why it's so detrimental. Tweet. You just lost a split second. How long does the face off last? And you might be saying, hey coach, but I'm winning my face offs. That's great. The point of the matter is never to be winning face offs right now. The point of the matter is, are you as good as you can be, right? That's what we always try to strive for. I never worried about the stats as much as I worried about, am I as good as I can be? So if we're trying to be as good as we can be, the question is, not if I'm winning a face-off right now against the guy who's average, the question is, am I as fast as I can be on the whistle, right? So in order to do that, I'd have to kick this extra motion out, so it's just that. 
And that's what we're trying to shoot for. So we got to get rid of this right-handed face-off only drill because it's going to cause the elbow quick. And once we start kicking our elbow, it's, it's really hard to get rid of, okay? So that's number one. That's the first drill. And that's probably the worst uh, as far as biomechanics is concerned. The second one is this. You guys might have seen this before. This is cool. I can't even do three balls. Okay, maybe I should step my juggling up so I get better face-offs, but here's the problem. What does this? And what does that have to do with face-offs? Nothing. <laughs> uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with face-offs. Okay, I see guys spending a ton of time juggling and all kinds of really cool stuff. And it looks cool and, and, and it's adorable. Uh, but it's gonna, it'll help you if you want to be a great juggler. The problem is, is that is about the equivalent of juggling basketballs in the air to master your shot in basketball, right? They're not equivalent at all. They don't do anything. And I've heard it helps my hand speed. How? I can't juggle. My hand speed is pretty good. Why is my hand speed good? Because I work specifically on the biomechanics of the face-off only, right? So I've also heard the term that it helps your hand-eye coordination, and it does, which is great. Here's the problem. Do I need hand-eye coordination to face off? No, I can do it blind. Why? Because the ball is always in the same spot. You only need hand-eye coordination for something in movement, right? Because your eyes have to catch it. You can face off with your eyes closed. There's no hand-eye coordination has anything to do with the initial motion on a face-off. It doesn't help you with your hand speed at all, and it doesn't help you with hand-eye coordination. It doesn't matter. So when you juggle, that's great. It looks cool, um, but it's an enormous waste of time as it pertains to the face-off, right? Because the only thing that helps you with a finite skill is practicing that skill. And let me give you an example. So I studied martial arts for years. When we did karate and we worked on our strikes, Okay, punches, kicks, elbows, whatever. We didn't juggle. We didn't do cartwheels. We didn't catch tennis balls. We worked on perfecting our punches and kicks and elbows, right? So in order for me to have the fastest, strongest, most devastating blow, I needed to make sure that my punch was perfect. So when you have your technique down with no wasted movement, you have maximal velocity and accuracy. And that's the idea that we have with our face-offs, is we want it to be perfect motion on just the face-off. So hopefully this is making sense to you guys, and I hope some of you coaches are kind of having like an aha moment here for, for some of you guys who are new to this and trying to get used to this. So the juggling looks cool. If you want to do it to get your hands warm, great. You know, at the FOA, we do chops just to get the hands warm. That doesn't help you with your hand speed either, but it's just to get your hands warm. So this is fine. As long as you understand, it's not going to help you with face-offs in particular, especially your technique. Um, so that's the second thing. The third thing that I've seen, and I get asked about it a lot because a lot of my, my guys understand that I was a strength coach, is they ask about weighing down your shaft. Okay, So there's the power shaft out there. Um, I've seen guys actually put rocks in their shafts uh, just to make it heavier. Here's the, mo here, here's the problem again, once, once again, this is not the same as throwing and catching, which by the way, from a scientific standpoint, there's no correlation to performance as it pertains to weighing something down when you train with it. I know people will shout it from the rooftops because they want to sell stuff, but for instance, for years when we played baseball growing up, my dad and other dads and other coaches would tell us, you know, use the donut, take two or three bats, together, swing them around so it feels lighter. Yeah, it does feel lighter. And you go up there and you're like, wow, okay, this bat feels lighter. We have found, studies have shown, there's absolutely no evidence that that helps you with your, with your skill set at all. Um, so it's more like a mental thing. But here's the problem. That's just a mental thing, and it doesn't hurt you. When it comes to weighing down a shaft, okay, we have to look at the biomechanics of the face-off again. I am extending this arm using my rotator cuff and delt. Okay, it's coming out. If this is a weighed force, 
and it's heavier than it should be. What I'm doing is I'm exacerbating a shearing force because the weight's going down and my arm's being extended on an angle, especially when it comes up and I'm trying to come up on a plunger, okay? That shearing force is gonna exacerbate and speed up shoulder injury, okay? So I know some guys are like, man, I do it and it works. Look, a lot of you guys out there, you're good because you're good. Naturally speaking, you have a good nervous system, you're athletic, you're coming to FOAs, you're learning the technique right. This stuff, heavy, heavy shafts, is gonna speed up how quickly you get an injury. And in a injury ridden position like ours, wrists, shoulders, low backs, we cannot afford to do anything that's gonna increase our chances of injury. So, if we wanna weigh something down and, and increase the shearing force on our shoulder, we're just asking to be a ticking time bomb for a really bad time to have an injury. And usually these injuries pop up your freshman fall. A lot of guys who overuse their bodies, they show up their freshman fall in college. And when your workload has now gone from an hour a day, a few times a year to three hours a day from August all the way to May, that's when you see the freshman in college, their bodies implode because they've had some kind of crack in their armor and you do not want to have that when you go to college because you're going to have a miserable career, okay? So just trust me, please, just don't bother weighing this down. I've also seen guys, they attach a band up here straight back to a wall. That's great if you want to develop your elbow kick and turning away from the ball. That's awesome because that's what you're going to end up doing. However, this is not a face-off. A face-off is driving into the ball left and right-handed to stuff the throat. So you're gonna develop your elbow kick again. Any band that's attached to something behind you is not gonna be a direct correlating skill set. You need something that's gonna be attaching to your core. If you get a short band attached from your core to your left hand, well now we're talking. Now you got something that's actually punching from your core straight into the ball. That's actually mimicking the face off and it's helping you speed up your hand speed into the ball from the exact motion in which you would do a face off. That's mimicking, that's perfect, okay? but. Having something attached behind you, especially just the right side, is gonna cause you to start turning away from the ball, and that's gonna really screw up your exits, and it's really gonna make you end up being one of these guys on 50-50s. So, those are a few things that I just think can help you coaches out there. Some of you younger guys who are getting into face-offs and wanna to try to catch an edge. If you wanna develop the fastest possible hand speed, the best possible reaction time, and the best possible technique on face-offs, Obsess over your wasted movement, okay? The FOA app, we have it on I iOS. You can download on iTunes. It's perfectly designed for you to have a random cadence and for it to video you doing your motions on a whistle in reaction, as well as going against a friend, so that you can then go back and study it and see, am I wasting movement by kicking my elbow out? Am I sitting back when I clamp like a lot of guys do? Am I kicking my left foot out? All of these things are what slow you up. So don't focus on, coach, I need to have a better reaction. Focus on, coach, how can I continue to cut away all this wasted movement so it goes away from this and becomes that. So I'm leaning over the ball, driving everything in, okay? So those are a few drills to get rid of. In the meantime, replace them with working on your technique, videoing yourself, sending it to your FOA coach so we can help you out.